As promised, I'm going to show you Street Complete. It's an app for casual mappers and a lot easier than doing the high detailed mapping that I normally get involved in. Street Complete is an app, it's available on Android for free, um, it's, there are discussions on how it can be made for to work on iPhone but that's not quite yet done. Um, and it's just really simple, so um, when you install it first it kind of steps you through the initial bits but go into your settings um, and set your profile, you'll have to log in with an OpenStreetMap account because all the changes you make uh, made directly so they'll be connected to your account which if you make some mistakes or some confusing things people can message you um, and help help teach you and learn you about that but once you've done that so um, you'll be able to see the map where you are and it just gives you lots of pop-ups lots of questions so street completes this idea that we don't need to map everything I've come to this little bit residential area in Hampton um, that there's lots of paths and footpaths um, and interesting bits and that's been mapped the layout but there's things like what surface is the um, is the path um, cycle parking is maybe mapped but what's the capacity and that's useful all these tags that I've explained in a recent talk um, you can use them for improving the map maybe subject specific maps or even kind of people studying and reviewing you know how good is an area for cycle parking do we need should there be more cycle parking by these shops um, and stuff like that so it gives you those quick questions and you don't need to be doing everything and you can ask one question or or lots you know answer this you can spend five minutes or an hour doing it um, I'm not sure how long I'll do because you know I want to keep it fun and, and not stretch it too long um, people have the like traditional open street mappers have had issues with it in the past because um, it just sometimes it's a load of data I think it's good to actually see what the quests as they call them are um, so if you go into the setting you can actually change there's a bit uh, quests and it's got lots of tick boxes it will tell you the type of questions you ask and so if there's something that you don't you keep getting annoyed by that question you don't want to look at it maybe it's hard to answer or not relevant then you can untick it you know just do the ones that that are going to keep you happy that that you're going to enjoy the contribution to um and i think that's really important so there's some like i don't think we need to map the surface of every road in the uk because if it's a road of a certain level you know as long as it's not a track or a surface road it it's going to be asked out because that's standard in the UK and done. But, you know, the tracks, um, what kind of grade it is, depends whether you could go. Um, things like paths, they're really important because if you want to walk somewhere, you want to know, is it asphalt that it's nice to walk? Um, or is it mud, is it grass, you know, which you might want to avoid if you've got mobility issues or if it's just wet, you know, and so sat nav and things like that and systems and people planning can change that um, and there's lots of stuff in a in that talk I did it in Leeds I said um, you know it's things like if it's a cycle path and it's cobbled but it's cobblestone well it's going to slow you down isn't it so all that information adds into the OpenStreetMap project the database and it can be used by sites like cycle streets or cycle.travel um, it can be used by the Leeds um, Institute for Data Analytics, you know, and in, in them reviewing active travel around the country. Um, so I'm going to walk around here. It's a, a place that I've known in the past, but don't really know what it's like. So I'll explore some things and uh, and probably tag and fix some bits. Um, I'm using my phone as a camera, so I'm not sure how much you'll be able to see. Um, I've got a small camera. It's not very good. Um, but yeah, you can see and follow me along with that for a bit.
motorcycle parking hasn't been mapped, so I'll have to do that the traditional way. Collection time. This can be done. Oh, there's not a reference number, I collect those, and it's T-W-A. T-W-12, it's dirty, so I can't quite see behind the dirt, T-2-8. Now a Boots Pharmacy. Didn't make the opening times clear, do they? Ah, oh, there they are. So, Monday to Saturday is 7 to 8.30 and then I can add on Sunday it is 10 to 4. Makes it so easy to type that in. It's a retail building. Um, so there's lots of things here. There's these benches which haven't been mapped. I thought it might ask me if they've got a bank backrest. I might wander around and see some other things. Thank <laughs> you. 
Tschüss. So as you can see there's loads of different questions it will ask, not just the surface, the type of trees, about the post box, different information and these quests might change over time, the app can be updated. Um, and it helps, it makes it easy, there's pictures so you can, it can help support what answers you might get. Um, and I think you can see I still get a bit limited, I'm used to, I know the things we can map, I know there's things that aren't mapped. Um, so they don't come up as questions. Um, so I still run OSM and at the same time recording my GPX track and I sometimes switch to take a photo of something that I'll map in a traditional way. And I found that happened very much in Leeds. But in Leeds we were all over group and it was nice I could do that while they were answering other questions. Um, so and I kind of do that. And But I don't need to. And this is going to help me as a traditional mapper because it can be quicker for me. I now can just map paths and, and maybe map the benches or the cycle barrier. Other people can then know, will add the more detail so I can get more done and then other people can get more done as well. So I think these kind of specialist apps or different apps and different ways of contributing to OpenStreetMap are really helpful and they're gonna really expand the data and the project to, do, to be able to do more and, and for people to do more with it. Um, and if you answer enough of the questions, will your area will have the questions done and you can see where there's new things and missing information um, and updates. Like, you know, it was asking me, uh, is the cash machine still there? And I could go, oh, and find it. And yeah, it's still there. It's not been removed. Um, one thing I noticed that was really helpful while we're out in Leeds, because we were doing this as a kind of mapping event, a map -thon, um, we were going around in groups of four and we so we had divided um, the area around, around where we were based in section. Um, but four of us went together so we could talk and see different things. And we realised there's a bit of an update process. You'll get the same questions because it loads it. Um, and even if you've answered it, someone else at the same time might get still get that question um, because it hasn't refreshed their data. Um, and I don't know the time gap between there. But what we found, and if you're doing a mapathon, because I think mapathons like we did in Leeds um, will be great to do again, um, low barrier to entry. But if you're as a group walking the same area, you can enter team mode, and I'll have to look and remember the settings, I'll put them here. Um, but yeah, you go settings, you go into team mode, and you say the number of people in your group. So actually I was in a group of three, I think there was of us that were using Street Complete. So we did that and everyone does that on their phone and it gives you a number of groups. If there's three, it's A, B, C. Um, if it's four, A, B, C, D. So you just talk to each other and say, I'm taking A and you press A. And then the next person says, I'm taking B and they'll press B. And I think what this does is it very quickly just divides the quests by three. So I'll get the first quest, the third one, the sixth one, the ninth one. And the person that picked um, group B, they'll get the second quest, the fourth one, um, the tenth one, and like that. So we don't get any duplication. And that really works. We didn't need to communicate. I could just say, oh, it's asked me about the road surface. I'll answer that. It's asked me about that type of parking. And other people did the same with their questions. And the only place I think that let us down was house numbers, because it's easier to do that one after the other um whereas because i wasn't getting up every house number in a terrace i had to make sure i was answering the right number um which house it was um so i'd probably if you were working in a team i'd probably turn off house numbers at least if they're dense um but yeah that works and is a great thing if you're doing a macathon um i've done some blog posts about that on living with dragons um dot com so you can see what happened in Leeds. I'm going to walk um, back home where I'm staying now. Well, same with my parents. I'm going to walk back there and answer a few more street quest things as I do it.